Hello everybody. So, we will study now the second part of the supercritical fluid extraction technology and which includes and here we will discuss mainly about the application aspects of this process in food industry. Just an overview of the process what we already discussed in the lecture 1, but to refresh your memory let me tell you that this is a process of separating one component from the other using supercritical fluid as the extracting solvent. The component which is separated is known as extractant commonly and the material from which it is extracted it is known as the you can call it as a matrix and the carbon dioxide gas is the most commonly used supercritical fluid. Sometimes it is modified by co-solvents like ethanol, methanol etcetera and it is a safe, expensive, eco friendly, non toxic and economical process. And here to refresh your memory that is just you can see that is here this uh, uh, extraction vessel, it is the extraction vessel. So, the carbon dioxide uh, generating source co-solvent to vessel. So, this carbon dioxide through the pressure in the pump and those things that is in the material that is the in the extractor is material is loaded and the carbon dioxide with the help of some pump and this uh, even co-solvent both they are their flow is regulated and in the desired proportions they are brought here. And finally, there is, there is a decompression valve that is under these desired condition above us, desired condition of temperature and pressure which can be optimized for uh, different process operations for different components in the material. And then these uh, particular that is the components of particular nature in from the food or from the biomaterials get extracted in the solvent and then they are the solvent is decompressed that is the depressurized and these components are extracted or they are obtained from the mixture of the uh, fluid and the extract. So, applications of the supercritical fluid extraction in the food industry and as you can see here we will discuss it has a large or wide range of application that is in the natural products as well as food industries. It can be used for decaffeination of coffee and tea, for extraction of oils and oily origins from spices, for deodorization of oils and fat. So, in the oil milling industry or oil refining industry it has a good application. It can be used for preparation or extraction of flavors, fragrances, aromas and perfumes etcetera. Decholesterolization of egg yolk and dairy cream that is the extraction of cholesterol from the cholesterol rich materials, extraction of antioxidants from plant materials, extraction of food colors from botanicals, natural pesticides or it can be used for extraction of nicotine from tobacco and all the so many. So, it has a wide ranging applications only few are listed here in the food. So, some this supercritical fluid extraction technology can be used as I told you in the earlier to little or that is extraction, purification and separation of edible oils and fats hope six acts hope which is used in the beer making industry. So, and hopes that is a it is a flower flowering part from which that is the uh, flavoring it has a good it gives the characteristic flavor to the beer. So, this hopes can be extracted uh, using this SCFE technology. So, the natural or characteristic flavor of the extract is retained that is natural dyes like anato viscous or vitamins like uh, tocopherols, vitamin E, 
tocotrienols, carotenoids, esterols, essential fatty acids like EPA, DHA, DPA, bioactive compounds like caffeine, theobromine, cholesterol, capsaicin, even monoglycerides, diglycerides, other aroma compounds, thiosulfinate, even essential oils from citrus fruits, etcetera, citrus oil <coughs> or antioxidants such as vitamin E, ascorbic acid, polyphenols or even diacin, genesin, etcetera. So, all sorts of compounds that is they can be extracted from the food material using this. So, we will, we will take up one or two examples and here it is the uh, decaffeination of coffee or tea using SCF E technology. So, that is process flow charge SCF technology and there is the in the plant process flow diagram we can see that is there are extraction vessel we have already seen in the earlier the same thing that is it is a continuous there are several extraction vessels and these are connected with the through pipings and other instruments and etcetera with that uh, CO2 supply or even standard supply etcetera and then extraction and depressurization. So, as far as the technology of the decaffeination is concerned the first coffee bean is wetted with water and this wetting of the bean tends to dissolve and dissolve caffeine from the solid matrix. And then wetted green bean are loaded into the extraction vessel and after it is loaded supercritical carbon dioxide is introduced into the vessel and the operating conditions normally maintained are 300 bar pressure and 40 degree Celsius temperature. So, under these conditions of course, there is it is given the required time all right for the extraction and once the extraction process and of course, which is the industry they have to optimize it and for the optimized time, optimum time once it is given then the extract which is finally, obtained it is transferred through an expansion wall to the separator and this in the separator actually what is done that is it operates at a comparatively lower pressure it at a low pressure um, sorry there are two spelling mistakes that that is at a lower pressure and L O W low pressure. So, this uh, separator operates at a low pressure and separates the extract which is obtained here in two phases that is it uh, separates the aqueous caffeine extract and carbon dioxide. So, the carbon dioxide is again recycled for the to improve the efficiency and the caffeine is sent to the recovery unit where it is uh, can be recovered either by adsorption or by some other method of course, by decompression decompressization and other things. So, even adsorption on an activated carbon column can be used to recover the caffeine from the extract. So, this in brief so of course, there is the here I have taken from the literature just to show you that how the extraction process variables that is maybe the extraction pressure, extraction time, extraction temperature they influence the yield of the caffeine. You can see that is these are the three lines all right and they are the three lines soon which has the temperature 85, 70 and 60 degree Celsius okay. and also there is some points the other points uh, which are these which is the line is not shown. This is the temperature 80 degree Celsius okay, and pressure is 280 bar. The other these temperatures are there and there are pressure are 250 bar and 280 bars okay, is maintained and the extraction time is varied. So, you can see that is yield y axis is the yield 
that is yield of the caffeine varies or it increases with the increase in the time with increase in the temperature as well as increase in the pressure. So, of course, for maximum yield or for maximum recovery depending upon process one should always standardize the process and optimize it. Similarly, in this slide you can see the concentration that is the concentration of the material which is extracted in this case caffeine and if it is initially taken as 100 percent concentration and which it was fed into the extractor vessel then in the extraction time was maintained 12 hours. All right. So, even the mass flow rate how with the mass flow rate the extraction the concentrate that is in the residue part, what is the concentration of the material is remaining that you can and that increases with both that is increasing the mass flow rate that is kg per kg solid as well as the pressure. So, this in the net cell can say that the operating pressure mass flow rate of the material in the continuous system and then gas temperature pressure other things they are influenced in the yield of the product as well as the concentration or remaining the material in the component. So, one should properly optimize. The extraction of natural food antioxidants have been widely studied by several authors right? even that is a many common or important uh, bio materials like rosemary etcetera has been have been used and their antioxidant has been processes for their extraction have been standardized or optimized like some researchers they have demonstrated that the antioxidant activity of supercritical extracts of rosemary or other different Turkish plants were higher than those obtained by conventional processes like steam distillation etcetera. Even better results are reported in terms of antioxidant activity right when particularly compared like uh, this antioxidant are extract obtained from the supercritical fluid extraction process and the extract obtained from the liquid solvent extraction process there is one when it was compared it was found that those obtained from the SCF process they have better antioxidant activity. Extraction of antioxidants from dyed mushroom particularly the ergothenin etcetera and in fact we also in our laboratory have done some work on this aspect. This picture just to make you just to show you there is either the dried mushroom mushroom is taken in the dried and then made into the powder allied to improve the extraction efficiency and then in the powder form it is introduced into the extraction vessel and the rest thing follows as usual in the, any other process that is what we have discussed earlier. So, it is given the desired time that is the uh, contact or of the temperature that is the carbon dioxide supercritical carbon dioxide at desired temperature pressure etcetera and then finally, ergothenin or extract is obtained ok. And we have uh, found that ergothenin that about uh, 1.3 milligram per gram dry weight and uh, there is total phenols about 5.48 milligram gallic acid equivalent per gram dry weight in our laboratory we got this result this data is already published. Also we have done work accordingly that is the extraction of bioactive components from microalgae it was used to extract lutein and uh, total phenolics or antioxidants from chlorella vulgaris our result showed that of course, we did study it we optimized the process of the temperature pressure combination and all those things and we about 
milligram per 100 gram dry weight lutein, 22.8 milligram gallic acid equivalent per 100 gram dry weight total phenols and 5.3 milligram per 100 gram dry weight antioxidant could be obtained using ethanol modified supercritical carbon dioxide in our process. This also that is the low cholesterol whole milk powder and cream powder. Supercritical carbon dioxide alone and ethanol modifier carbon dioxide are implied various researcher have done work on this aspect. We have also done substantial work in our laboratory right, for the preparation of our low cholesterol dairy cream or milk powder or cream powder. And in our process about we could recover about or we can reduce that cholesterol from the milk fat about 55.8 percent and 46 percent cholesterol removal from whole milk powder could be achieved by using supercritical carbon dioxide alone and ethanol modified SCO2 respectively. So, of course, addition of ethanol led to enhanced extraction rate and this again the similar process that is the here milk powder is introduced into the vessel. It is given the intimate contact with the supercritical CO2 along with the modifier and then finally, the rest procedure as usual is followed. Let me elaborate little that is the process flow chart for the preparation of low cholesterol milk powder using supercritical fluid carbon dioxide technology and here you can see in this pictorial flow diagram that the retolio milk powder is taken and the milk powder is introduced into the extraction vessel and this vessel is fitted into the SCFE equipment, we have bench top SCFE equipment and after it is in the material is put into the vessel, then other processes as usual are followed that is the carbon dioxide as well as together either because we conduct a lot of experiment this we conducted together we pass as well as along with that separately or together with that modifier and we standardize process parameter and finally, there is developed a technology for preparation and optimize the parameter. And in fact, the material which was cholesterol which was obtained and low cholesterol cream, the dairy cream and milk powder, their characteristics were also analyzed and these low cholesterol dairy cream, it was found that there is no difference in the properties as well as the, in the taste of the cream low cholesterol containing cream or even the after the removal of the cholesterol. So, this uh, th similarly that was from the milk powder similarly for the cream powder we have. So, what we did first we lipolyzed the cream and converted it into that is the cream powder and this cream powder was used for the study in the extraction process as I mentioned earlier, we optimized the process of cholesterol removal from the cream using this study. The input variable were the temperature, time and pressure. Temperature for ranging from 40 to 75 degrees Celsius, time from 2.5 hours to 3.5 hours, pressure from 100 to 250 in this range all these variables were made and different about 20 experiments having combinations of these variables were conducted okay, as per the experimental design and the static time was kept 30 minute and the flow rate was fixed at 6 liter per minute. This are the some of the response surface plots showing the effect of temperature and pressure on the 
cholesterol removal, effect of temperature and dynamic time as well as effect of pressure and dynamic time on the reduction in cholesterol from the uh, dairy cream or cream powder. And here you can see here that is the by increasing these variables there are different that is the both this is it increases for some time like for example, if you increase the time there is the increase uh, reduction is more, but with the pressure it first is sometime increases with the temperature also it increases and then decreases and with the pressure also it may at higher pressure it is high and the, the pressure is reduced it may become low, but after some time again there is one say pressure. So, it has all these factors like a temperature, dynamic time, pressure etcetera, they have important effect on the uh, reduction of the cholesterol from the uh, cream powder. So, this is exhibited in these response surface plots, but the we should see that uh, the cholesterol is removed why the cholesterol is removed there should not be substantial reduction of the fat from the. So, we also studied that is how there is these parameters which were applied for the extract uh, removal of the cholesterol how they are influencing the removal of the fat because in the food material in the dairy cream these cholesterols that is which are phospholipid they are generally found associated with the other lipids molecule. So, it is quite likely that the the fat also get extracted with the cholesterol. So, one has to optimize the process that is and that we have done. So, that uh, this uh, for maximum cholesterol uh, removal or uh, reduction in the cream with minimum fat content. So, this again similar effect which we have seen and these effects are of the temperature pressure, temperature dynamic time and pressure dynamic time on the separation of fat from the cream during supercritical fluid extraction. So, accordingly I told you we could standardize the process, we have optimized the parameters and with the help of the modifier we could get at least at around about uh, 65 to 70 percent reduction in the cream all right this is they take the picture of the low cholesterol removed cream powder as well as uh, that is the initial cream powder with full cholesterol right and this cholesterol removed cream powder is was further used in the preparation of products like uh, butter and ghee etcetera and it was observed that there was no significant effect in the characteristics of the products prepared from the local. So, it becomes a good and very effective and mean for the okay. So, also that is a an important uh, aspect of this supercritical fluid extraction is in the quality control. Okay. It is a unique that is a very good advancement for the quality control particularly in the case of fat analysis etcetera, because in the products like baking dough, milk, chocolate products etcetera, the conventional methods which are used for the removal of the fat or determination of the fat content in these products are normally labor intensive, they require much time, they require large amount of hazardous organic solvents. So, using this supercritical fluid extraction technologies, these <coughs> sorry using carbon dioxide as a solvent one can get the or under complete extraction of this uh, lipids or fat molecules even whole all fats or lipids or even selective fats like monoglyceride, diglyceride etcetera. So, 
this uh, becomes that is SCFE technology becomes an alternative method for all extraction, isolation and purification of the fat content from that uh, such materials etcetera. So, it becomes a very good useful tool for the industry as well okay. and this can be in fact propagated and industries should use. Okay. So, this ends the lecture with a few examples to conclude we can say that this supercritical fluid extraction technology is a very good technology particularly where our products of our interest are high value products, heat sensitive product, we want health ingredients in these material to remain intact. Uh, so, they can be easily extracted uh, using supercritical carbon dioxide without any adverse effect on the health component as well as adverse effect uh, without any adverse effect on the environment and other things. There is no byproduct, uh, no uh, residue and this is a completely green technology. However, for every product and for every process depending upon the characteristics of the raw material as well as depending upon the ingredient which is being extracted which we want to extract from this one need to properly optimize the process and standardize the process and accordingly suitable plant and machinery need to be made to facilitate the extraction process and to get proper and the plant machinery equipment design etcetera should be properly made so that